Welcome back to Pseudo Sergeant. In this segment, I'm going to teach you how to drive a TFT screen with a GPL of a Raspberry Pi. Now let's get to the terminal. First thing you want to do is download your disk image uh, of RetroPie. Go to retropie.org.uk and uh, click on the downloads link. And you'll notice that there are two different disk images to choose from. One of them is for the Raspberry Pi 0 and 1, and the other is for the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. If you're not sure which Raspberry Pi you have, go to raspberrypi.org slash products and look at the different versions of the Raspberry Pi, compare that with what you have, make sure that they match up, and uh, once you figure out which one you've got, go ahead and choose which one to download, which would be, uh, in my case, is uh, Raspberry Pi 01. All right, after our file downloads, we want to go to our download in our image directory and take a look at it. So we have RetroPi-4.3-RPI1 uh, underscore zero dot IMG, and then dot GZ, it's a GZIP file. That's a compressed file. Right now it's compressed to 640 megabytes, and what we want to do is expand that to an uncompressed file, and we use GunZip. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's man that. GNZip, GZIP, ZCAT, compress and expand utility. Um, I'm going to use the option K to keep the file so that after it expands, it doesn't remove it. And then I'll also use um, V for lowercase v for verbose. So G unzip dash K dash V and uh, the disk image. So that'll expand. After it expands, let's take a look at the uh, different file sizes. The reason I use the use the K flag is to keep the file so that we could, I could show you the comparison between the compressed file and the uncompressed. Compressed is 640 megabytes and the uncompressed is 2.2 gigabytes. All right, so we'll list the block devices to find out where our SD card is in the system. And uh, it's SDD, it has one partition. And what we wanna do is use DD, it's a utility for uh, converting and copying a file. There are a variety of operands that we need to send to it. BS for bytes, and that's how many bytes it will read and write at a time. And then we also need to provide an in file, IF, that's the file that it's going to read, that's our uh, disk image, and an out file, that's the file that it's going to write to, will be our SD card on the device tree. I like to have status, so to get some verbosity, we need status equals progress. We'll invoke the instruction here, DD IF equals uh, dot forward slash the disk image. All right, so let's take a look at where it is in our um, directory structure. So uh, DEV SDD, that's uh, where it is in our file system. DEV is the device directory. It's on, right off of root, and then SDD is the file, and that file represents our SD card. So let's put that back here. Um, our out file will be the SDD. We need the the path there, and then we also add the byte size, which will be 10 megabytes. We'll also add status equals progress. It's going to give us an error here because I didn't pseudo this, and the reason I didn't pseudo it is because I always like to type it out just so I can see it before I provide pseudo because I want to make absolutely sure that I don't write to the wrong disk and hose my system. So I always like to check that over. Then I'll pseudo bang bang. Then we have some progress so we can see what's going on here and uh, just let that run its course. Now that we have the operating system on our SD card, we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi, we can attach HDMI, a USB hub with Ethernet on it, and then we can plug in a keyboard. All right, uh, once it boots, press F4, and then it'll drop you out to the terminal. In here, you're gonna do sudo raspi config, it will bring you into the configuration menu and you want to go to interfacing options and go down to uh, SSH, enable that, the yes. Next you want to go into localization options and change local and then you're going to want to switch it to whatever your local region is. Mine is US UTF-8 dash UTF-8, something like that. EN underscore US UTF-8. If you're Spanish speaking or German speaking or whatever other language speaking go ahead and select what's appropriate for you and then once you do that acceptor and then you got to select it again 
And then again, acceptor. All right, next go back in the localization settings again and change the time zone. Select your country and then the zone within your country. And go back into the localization options again. This time go to keyboard layout. Select keyboard layout that's appropriate for your keyboard and region and localization and so on and so forth. And just let it do its thing. Uh, select your keyboard there and then say OK. I just usually go with generic keyboard. This is the part that actually matters. I select U English, US. There's all these other options to choose from. I just go with the default everything. But there was just that one option there that really made a difference. The reason it makes a difference is because the, uh, the pipe will either be like a tilde or some other button than what it's supposed to be. And you want to get the buttons that match your keyboard. And I think you go into localization one more time and change the Wi-Fi country. And select the, your country of origin or your country of region, wherever you're at. I'm over here in the, the old United States doing some uniting over here. There we go. And just say OK, so on and so forth. Now go into, um, we got a couple other things we need to do here. Um, we need to go into the advanced options. We need to s expand the file system. Oh, actually, we need to force the audio to 3.5. Then we go into the advanced options again. Yep. And then expand the file system. And that'll do whatever it's doing there. We say OK. Um, I, think, I think that's it. And then we're going to restart. OK, now we're going to need to get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And to do that, without already knowing it, we can utilize this utility Nmap. Let's take a look at the manual page for that. Networking Exploration and Security Port Scanner. Um, it can do a lot of things. We're going to do something very simple. We're just going to scan the network and see what ports are open on the devices. So we'll do Nmap and then 192.168.1. star, And it'll scan the network and then it'll spit back what it, what, what it finds. So Nmap reports back the devices connected to the network, and I'm looking for devices that have SSH open. There's only one device, and here's the IP address for it. So I'm gonna try and connect to that IP address through SSH as root. Now, I can tell you right now that it's gonna fail because I haven't adjusted the, uh, or I haven't modified the default SSH config. So I'm just gonna log in as Pi. And then I'll go ahead and edit the uh, SSH config so that I can log in as root. And the reason I want to be able to log in as root so that I can uh, remotely access files on the root directory. So I'm going to sudo nano etc, uh, actually sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash SSH forward slash SSH config. And then I'm going to sc scroll down and find uh, permit root login. It's commented out. I'll uncomment that so that it is enabled. Now that I've modified the SSH config file, I need to restart the SSH service. Um, but I don't always remember what the SSH um, service is. It's, so let me let me look that up. Uh, SSH uh, pseudo system control list unit files grep enabled. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's SSH dot service of course. Okay, so I need to do sudo system control uh, restart ssh.service and I'll just also sudo system control restart uh, ssh switch.service I don't exactly know what that service does but it's got ssh in it I'll just restart it okay so I'll exit and then log in as root one thing I needed to do in order to successfully log in as root I actually paused the screen capture to do this I was logged, I logged back in as Pi and then set the password for root and then I was able to log in as root with the new password. The reason I want to be able to log in as root is so that I can use the Dolphin file browser and I can transfer files to the root directory. Okay, so we're logged back in as Pi and we're going to go to the boot directory. I should use ls here. ls space dash a, okay, here we go. We uh, need to edit the config.txt file. The reason we need to edit the config.txt file is so we can add some custom lines for our TFT screen. Our TFT screen is going to be driven by a device tree overlay. If you are curious about device tree overlays, head over to raspberrypi.org forward slash documentation forward slash configuration forward slash device hyphen tree dot MD and read about device tree overlays and parameters. It's an interesting topic and it's a little much to cover right now, but we'll go into it a little further in a future segment. 
but right now just know that we're going to create a device tree overlay and compile it on our Raspberry Pi and it will be in the boot directory. So this is my local machine. I have a file browser open and it's split into two panes. The, my local machine is on the left and the Raspberry Pi is on the right. I'm able to log into the Raspberry Pi over the FISH protocol, which uses SSH on the back end. Since we went in and configured the SSH to accept root login, I'm able to log in as root and go directly to the boot directory. And I can just copy and drag files directly there. I can even edit them. The files that I need to uh, transfer over are the GPO-TFT-16-bit-565.dts. That's the source file that once compiled will create the dt-blob.bin file. And when the system boots, the config.txt file has some configuration lines in there that refer to the dt-blob.bin file. And that enables the Raspberry Pi to drive the TFT screen directly with the GPIO. And right now we're just gonna go through the process of setting that up. These are the lines that we need to put into the config.txt file. I'm gonna copy these over and then I'm gonna go into the terminal and edit the uh, config.txt file from here. So sudo nano config.txt. I'll go all the way down to the bottom of this file and I'll just paste these lines. And then control X and enter to save. Okay, now that we have the config.txt file edited, we're gonna go back to the file browser and look at the uh, device tree source file. And at the top of the device tree source file, I made a comment when this comment is a, uh, a set of instructions or a, a, a couple of lines where we can, com for a compile script. And I wrote that in, I put that into a, a separate file as well. So we need to copy this over and we also need to copy over the compile script onto the Raspberry Pi. All right, let's see if the file's copied over. All right, we got GPIO, uh, the DTS file, and then we have the compile script. Let's cat the compile script. Okay, there is our, uh, our line that we need. So when, this, when I call the script, that's just what it does. There we go. Now the DTS file is con uh, compiled, and there should be a uh, .bin file. Let's see here. There you are, dt-blob.bin. That is the file that will tell the kernel and the operating system and everything how to interface with the uh, TFT screen over the GPIO. At this point, we should be able to reboot the Raspberry Pi and the TFT screen should be working. All right, to recap, we configured SSH so we could log in, modify some files. We added a custom device tree source file compiled the device tree source file, and then added some additional lines to the config.txt file in order to get the kernel and operating system, all that working together to drive the TFT screen with the GPIO. If you have any comments, anything to add, any questions, please visit element14.com forward slash pseudosergeant and leave your comments, messages, suggestions there. Have fun and stuff. Live your life the way it lives. Talk with you next time. See you later.